Despicable Me, the first one. What a huge hit, as we talked about. You had Steve Carell. You got you got. And by the way, there's not. It's not a monster cast in the Despicable Me movies. It's not like all star cast. And so it's. A, I, I do appreciate Universal's animation department to a bigger degree and Fox because they don't seem to do that as often. Uh, it seems to be a DreamWorks thing, and I'm arguing lately that DreamWorks animation is killing the animation business. That's another argument, though. Uh, <laughs> they're making too soon, many movies. Well, pretty soon they're going to be sending your writing jobs to China, too. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyways, Universal, though. You know, not much laughter from us about that. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> Despicable Me. Well, me, I'm, I'm writing in it. I'm, yeah. I'm really afraid of that. But Despicable Me is this just, it's, this movie was a monster success. But not only just a monster success, I've never met anyone that didn't like this movie. From parents, from, from 80 years old to 5 years old. I've never met anyone that didn't watch this movie and for one reason or another be completely in love with it. Uh, parents and older parents, they love the fact, and, and grandparents, they love the fact of the relationship with Gru and the children. Yeah. Okay, the children love the children. And they love how Gru's wild antics. And Do you write the movie going, how do we appeal this for everybody? Or did you just write a really great story about family and it just turned out everyone loved it is I, there a I, formula to no, it? no we we literally ken and i have always just tried to write to make each other laugh right you know we'll we'll, we'll assign scenes and divvy them up and then we bring them together and read them and then the goal is to have the better pages you know and so literally we never thought about like, well, what, what's in this for the kids, or what's in this for the adults? No, the, and the reason... It's kind of just all for us. The reason we took, you know, we, we connected with the movie in the first place was because we each have three kids. Yeah. And so we saw, you know, Chris Melodondri showed us these images early on, and it was just an image of a, of a villain, just this random villain with these three little girls, stuck with these three girls. And the design was different, and they were very early sketches, and that's all they had was, an yeah. I, was that spark of an idea. And there was just the one drawing where you see the villain, and he's trying to rob a bank or something, and he's got the one little girl hanging on his leg, <laughs> and one's pulling on his jacket. And as a that's dad, it's like, yeah, I have been there. You know, I've how many conference calls have I tried to, to do where the kids are in the house, Juggling and I'm hiding in the bathroom? Work. Because they're going to come and get me. Yeah. So, the little fingers come under the door. So that, <laughs> you know, that was that was the connection for both of us. I think early on was just That's like, great. yeah, we get that. Do you guys character. get together and write, or is it like you separate and then you come together maybe a couple times a week? Or no, how does that work? We're in the same general zone. We're in the same, same room. office, but we'll discuss it. We talk through like. Here's the next 30 pages. Yeah. Talk it through, outline it, and then say, okay, this is Ken's scene. This is Cinco's. And we assign and it we like that. Then we go off and write Then we go corners. off and write in our corners. Yes. <laughs> our corners. And then once we're done. We come together and try and make each other laugh. Yeah. That's great. I, I got to tell you, I was, uh, so, so you go out and write in your corners. Do you, do you guys write the same scene and then bring it together? No, or do we, you go, you do scenes. this one, we and we'll, I'll do this one, and then we'll switch? Right. And then you put in your notes, I'll put in my notes. No, or... we'll generally, we'll write, each write our scenes, we'll come together, and we'll literally stick them together in one, you know, on one computer, sure. and we'll just scroll through and read them together out loud, and then we pitch out ideas for and each other. And then other's... you'll rewrite it together? Yeah. Or... Yeah, yeah that's okay, that's works. cool. That's really cool. It's very efficient. We yes. actually are able to you're get a, a lot of work done quickly, yeah. Oh, yeah, because you're basically both writing half a script right. and then rewriting it together as a team. Yeah. So that's, that is efficient. That's a great way to do it. It's a... Uh, yeah, you guys are a machine that way. So let me ask you about Despicable Me 2 now. Uh, July 3rd or July 2nd if, you, if your kids <laughs> yeah. can be out at midnight. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Despicable Me 2. You knew this thing was such a monster hit. You knew the call was coming, right? Pretty early on, yeah. Did and it come like right away? It did. And, you know, we were, we were really surprised at how big a, a success that first one was. We did not expect, like you say, so many people come up to us and once you know just love the movie and it's a lot of people's favorite movie and it is. that's just it is. weird you know yeah. we just i mean we always liked it but we didn't know that it was going to really resonate like it did but i think we did it was maybe after that first weekend or the second weekend that it was sort of like oh chris meldon recalled this and said like we should start thinking you guys should start thinking about a sequel and what it would be yeah. and and yeah and we did you know at first, when we first wrote the first one we were thinking well here's the movie and we're done and we weren't thinking sequel, but then once, right. is that once, Chris's polite way of saying we're going to be calling you with the we want your sequel ideas or yeah yeah, yeah. yeah oh absolutely yeah, yeah. he yeah we offers all coming knew. so get ready right yeah. and so we we started you know bouncing ideas around and as soon as you we did that it was like oh yeah we have this great setup we have this guy who used to be an ex villain 
He's now a dad. Is he still yeah. a villain? What does that mean? Does he have to drive the kids to school yeah, right. before he robs the? Ba- you know. So once we realized we have this great family and this great world to play in, we were pretty excited. I loved it. I'll tell you why I love this idea too. I tell you why the sequel works for me so well. This movie could work as anything. It ends up working really well as an animation. But this is how talented a writers you guys are. This could have worked as live action. This could have been a sitcom for five years on TV. I mean, it could have been. That's how good the storyline is, where you could have gone in so many directions with it. I mean, it's just, it's really smart. And and I think you have to lend that to the success of how, and not just the success, how well written the first one is, because it easily sets you up for this. And by the way, you could probably now set yourself up for two, three more movies. I mean, just say it. I mean, it is a great idea that lends itself to a lot of scenarios as a viewer you want to see as you know well thank i mean it it is a great idea and i and not you know not to take credit away from us because we love to take the credit but it is kind of the, the you know when this whole thing came together it was this great story that we totally connected to and then we had these amazing designs you know you went the world was just such a cool place to be in with the gadgets and the cars and the weapons and you know these these artists these french artists and american they they designed this really cool yeah. world that was just fun to be in and you know the directors chris and uh, pierre they they came in and they got that like looney tunes quality yeah. like into yeah. the movie with the minions, the minions. and that was yeah. their baby the they, minions were their baby that's you know, they, sure. really the minions yeah. wasn't something you had in the script originally we, we had mentioned minions. that grew had minions but we certainly hadn't seen them like not, that not the animation no, style yeah. not the energy that was their right. genius and, yeah and so it really was this kind of like family thing that happened where you know we had the story we had these artists, we had Chris and Pierre who had this vision for these minions and, and the slapstick. and What the a fun collaborative it was just, process. It was just That's a great, great Yeah, it great has experience. to you know, you, it's three years of making the movie. Really? So you all wow. have to work together. Even though they're in Paris, you know, we have video conferencing two or three oh, wow, times a week. Oh, wow, they're making this film in Paris. Yes. Yeah, they make it in Paris. So 24, around the clock, somebody's working on the movie. And you guys always. do the voices then here, right? Yeah, most right. of the recording was done here. Yeah. And then, yeah. That's a great, that's, yeah. that's awesome. Uh, the minions, I mean, man. Uh, kids love those things. Yes, they do. I I, I like them. I think they're funny. Um, it, it, I I gotta tell you, I watched this movie and like, I don't want to like it. <laughs> I'm like fucking cute. Why is this so cute? Like I'm at that age. I'm like you know, 29 turning 30. So I'm yeah. like bitter. I'm the bitter artist. I'm like you know, I'm that guy. I'm like where you guys were when you were just getting Bubble Boy around <laughs> right, then. You know. Yeah. And you would have watched this movie and been like, yeah, whatever. Cute, <laughs> yeah. cute, cute, cute. But it is. It's great. It, it really is. It's, and it's, it's a movie that just makes you smile like the whole way through. Even uh-huh. I'm fighting it. And I'm like, <laughs> well, what happened with Ben Bratt? Uh, they brought in Ben Bratt to replace Al Pacino. Yeah. What's he, the deal with that? Do uh, we know? <laughs> I heard Al was a little difficult. You know, we don't know exactly. All we know is... I didn't find him. Di- I, I don't think Al was difficult. I think it just ended up being he saw the movie and creative differences, yeah. and and it sort of wasn't what he had imagined, I guess, in some way. And so, so went separate ways. And then, uh, fortunately, Ben Bratt. Ben was, was good. Somebody, he was amazing. He was good. Considering was really that good. he stepped in literally at the last minute. Last minute. Just... But were you were worried about a release date and stuff at that point? Is the studio worried? Yeah, it was. It was a concern because it's like, oh my gosh, you know, the movie's basically done. Yeah, right. And then so you have to bring somebody in, and they have to match the animation and the performance, but also you know he had to bring his own. Stuff See, but to it this too. proves my point. I think Al Pacino doesn't sell more tickets for this movie. And Ben Bratt's just as good as I think he ever would have been. I don't think it matters sometimes. Yeah. I really don't. And Ben was re- he's really good in this he movie. He is really. I mean the the character he plays, I don't want to I'm not going to ruin anything, <laughs> spoil anything, but he's great. And the setup at the mall's great. I it's a really fun setup. <laughs> oh, it's really thanks. fun. Thanks. Kristen Wiig. Oh. We great, lo- great pickup there, though, right? So yeah, great. we love Kristen Wiig so much. She was a I'm lot of fun. You, I bet. She, yeah, writing for her is a joy, and then seeing her take your words and make just, them way it was better. Great make them watching awesome. her play something other than the plucky love interest. She wasn't yeah. plucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I'm fine with her being the love interest, but it was nice for her not to be plucky and like you know down on her luck all the time. She. She was the ass kiss kicker. Yeah, uh, yes. yeah. You know, Gru's actually the plucky love interest. That's right. <laughs> In a weird way, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm watching this film, and I thought you guys could write a great romantic comedy. Do you think you could, guys could do that? 
I totally think we could. Actually, one of my first scripts, the, the spec that sold was a romantic comedy. Yes. We haven't really, we have not done a thing since then. Although I mean, Santa special, Claus 2 was a little, a little romantic, romantic comedy. Yeah, sure. But, yeah. But like a straight I mean, out that, romantic comedy. Yeah. And it was, it's sort of surprising to us how well a lot of the romance in this one works. It works really because well. Because it's. You know, it's not easy. It's an animated movie. It's an animated movie. movie. Like, kids are going to be, you know... I was really surprised how well it worked. (laughs) Yeah. But, like, Carell and and Kristen both did an awesome job of, like, making those characters... You know, playing the attraction and that gradual attraction. It was very... It's it's fun to watch. It worked it real well. It yeah. worked really well. It was very believable. Were they in the same room when they're doing each other's lines? Not Never. Once. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy that anybody sounds like they're really talking to the, the same ca- to the character across them because right. they're all done separately on different sides of the continent we, sometimes. You know, it's Yeah, we play a little bit like Kristen would get to hear what Steve had done, you know, yeah. and he would get to hear what she had done. So that would sort of inform their performances, but yeah, they're not playing off each other at I'll, all. I'll tell you what, the, the genius of that Minions thing again, too. Uh, <laughs> my nephew is one years old. He's 17 months. Uh, he, he loves those fucking Minions. <laughs> he's, like, he's not even old enough to talk. He hasn't said a word. Yeah. <laughs> he hasn't said one word, but he loves the Minions. And actually, I kind of blame you, two for him not talking because he sounds like a Minion now. <laughs> well, there you go. Right. So it's kind of your fault, I, I, but it's okay. It's, we're still friends. So he just right. goes, Beedo, Beedo, like that? Yeah, he does <laughs> shit like that. Yeah, someone yeah. said it was like, someone called it the great, they're the greatest marketing tool since Star Wars or something well, that like was, that. that was, is, that's the cynical argument that everyone's like, oh, you made these cute little things to sell toys. <laughs> but they do add to the movie. Oh, of course. Yeah, they yeah, do they really were not made, I guarantee you that. They weren't From what I know of Pierre Coffin, <laughs> he was not thinking of selling toys and or anything. the first movie, fun. there were no toys. I love the little subplots <laughs> yeah. with them, though, by the yeah, way. They're oh, yeah, they're just fun. You know, they're little Marx Brothers-like uh, sidekicks. And that movies. wasn't in the original scripts, though, right? Well, no, most of those fun little things did come from the from the directors. That's they really crazy. did. You know, we yeah. had them in there as uh, as minions, and they would have sure. little jokes, and they, we wrote them in English, you know, and then th- they took them and, and just, I mean, that's an animator's dream to have characters. It really that, does have that French comedy vibe yeah. to yeah. it, Yeah, it, ha- it, does. it does. Yeah, and yeah. And obviously, once we knew we had them, then we could write them in and use them. So and, this time, you definitely minioned yes. it up, yes. because yes. there are a lot of minions in this movie. I will say uh, the subplot of this movie revolves around the minions. Yes. It's a very big component of the film uh, down to the final 20 minutes which is like uh, minion hell yeah. <laughs> if yeah. you will yes. um, world war minion yeah right right it's a cr- yeah right world war minion right and it is a crazy last 20 minutes I gotta tell you this film was just it's bonkers it's a great ride uh, you guys keep being successful I mean hop was a success you guys everything you guys are doing is just turning out really well it's knock, knock on, on wood yes. knock on Joe Montana yes. tables here 